Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Pork and Stash Project. Today is March 2nd, 2018, and uh, a brief show for you today. We just have some kit releases, being the end of February, the very, very, very beginning of March here. There are no kit announcements uh, to be had. Uh, kit announcements probably start next week. Uh, and we're also getting into that great time of the year, as far as I'm concerned, where uh, we are heading into the Shizuka Hobby Show coming up in May. But of course, in order to do the pre-orders for that, we'll have to get the information here uh, probably the end of this month or at least the very beginning of April uh, as the once the kit manufacturers basically hit the end of May as far as the releases go, June and on uh, tend to be from the hobby show itself. So uh, Hasegawa, Aoshima, Tamiya, things like that, uh, you know, those, those, kit, those releases... Uh, you know, starting in June, will have to be stuff from the show. So we'll probably, you know, find out again relatively quickly because it should be the uh, very end of the month, around the, the last Monday of the month or so. It's usually when Aoshima announces for their next, basically, what is 60 days ahead, which at the end of March would be the beginning of June. And, uh, yeah, we should you know, get our first glimpse at what the summer and early fall should uh, hold for us. So that's always exciting. Uh, but, like I said, nothing on like I said, uh, on kit release news. The one uh, big announcement in the hobby would be that Mobius Models is being sold. Uh, Mr. Winsper, who's ran uh, Mobius for the past 12 years uh, due to health issues in his family, health issues of his own, uh, which are not necessarily serious; they're just reoccurrent. He seems to have, you know, back and shoulder problems and things like that. Has decided to effectively uh, retire, uh, at least mostly. He's still going to be at the company, uh, sort of directing it creative, creatively. Uh, Dave Metzner, who's the head of product development, who of course is, you know, not the car guy per se, but is, you know, mostly known to the car modelers. Uh, from his participation with us uh, in terms of that subject matter, uh, and Bob Plant uh, will all be staying on, and they have sold it to uh, Pegasus, uh, Pegasus Hobbies out in California. Now, of course, a lot of people know Pegasus from their wheel sets. Uh, I saw somebody in a forum make some sort of comment that the only automotive thing they ever saw Pegasus makes was lowrider wheels, and they don't like this move, which even if you don't intend to sound wildly xenophobic in making that statement, you come off that way, but Pegasus makes a great deal of model kits, a lot of sci-fi stuff, a lot of buildings and things like that, they have a model department basically, we just don't dabble with it because, you know, we're not, well I mean, there's lots of you guys out there that build everything, so that's, you know, that's cool, I don't, I, I mean, there's stuff about tanks and planes and, and boats and things like that that interest me, but not enough that are like trying to figure out what's good, what's bad, and, and get into the whole thing of, of building them. Because, uh, you know, when you have as much stuff as I have, trying to add another branch to the uh, tree, so to speak, is not something that I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but I know the, you know, so, to some people, uh, Pe Pegasus is wheels. To some people, Pegasus models is a whole thing. So, what they've said in the announcement from Pegasus, or actually not from Pegasus, but from uh, Mobius, I believe it's on their website, and they also released it on their Facebook page, is that, you know, the people are staying on, the projects that are currently in development are going to continue with development. Basically, there will be no effective change uh, externally, except that there is new ownership. It will continue to be operated as Mobius. It's not going to change the name to Pegasus, so it'll still be its own independent company with basically the same people there, just, uh, like I said, Frank is, is uh, just taking a, a well-deserved break uh, to, to heal himself up and just, you know, said he's still minority owner, so he's still involved, just not the head of it day to day. So, uh, you know, all of the new things they announced back at the Detroit NNL at the fall with the, the 65 Nova and the 64 Chevy 2 Gasser and the, the next uh, series of F-Series pickups from the, you know, earlier mid-1960s. All should still be a go, and again, nothing should really change, but again, it did get sold, and so now we wait to see what's going to happen with, of course, the entire Habakkuk situation, which 
Probably will not resolve until next month, or at least we won't get a better idea of how it's going to resolve until next month, because they have until basically around the 21st of April or so to make their uh, filing with the bankruptcy court. But that was sort of came out of left field. Not, I mean, people within the industry knew that it was going, that it was taking place, that the sale had taken place, because it had gone through a few weeks before they actually made the public announcement. But uh, it was not exactly something that was you know readily expected, right? Mobius obviously makes money. You wouldn't be buying it otherwise, uh, but I don't think anybody really foresaw it being sold necessarily. But it is what it is, and, and hopefully it'll continue to uh, grow, and maybe with uh, you know a little more, uh, I don't say better ownership, because there's nothing wrong with necessarily the ownership the way it was, but you know, maybe we can start working on those little things around the edges that'll make Mobius a better company uh, and models in general. Windshield fits, quality control issues, and things like that. Uh, would be fantastic and, and you know, get them up to where a lot of people think they are, but yeah, they're not really there in reality. And there's a lot of people who build their kits and they like them, and that's fine. But uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, for all of the goofiness that some Ravel stuff has, proportion wise, Ravel kits never have had the significant fit issues that some of the Mobius stuff has had. So it is what it is. So, what do we have in the world of releases this week. So we finally got the Ravel stuff for the month of February out. Uh, it was a little late in coming, but it's it didn't make it in time. Uh, as well as a few things from overseas that wrap up the month of February from uh, Aoshima and Hasegawa and things like that. So let's take a look at what we got uh, going on here. First up from Ravel, really issue of the 1966 Pontiac GTO. Uh, you know, not a whole heck of a lot to say about this kit. This uh, is a completely factory stock kit. It's basically the way it was. Uh, I'm looking up here. There it is. My, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm trying to think what the hell that stupid thing is called. It's uh, something. Oh, Ravel Muscle. Okay, that's what that. <laughs> I know it was in Street Burners. It's something else. Ravel, Ravel Muscle. Basically, it's a reissue of that kit uh, that was done. I think that kit was last done nine years ago, so it was due for a reissue, even though, of course, people who don't really realize how long time has passed between these things get reissued always complain, but it has been nine years since that kit came out last. Uh, it was a 2000 and, uh, what, 2009 reissue. It does not have the drag parts in it. Uh, it is strictly a factory stock vehicle. Box art is rather uninspiring, but it is, you know... <laughs> if we start critiquing Ravel's box art compared to, say, Round 2 or Mobius, yeah, there's, there's not a comparison there, so... Uh, Again, there's not a lot to say about that because it's you know it was a newer tool kit, but it's been out a couple of times and there's nothing new about it. So you know if you don't have one, now's your chance to go grab one. And so the next kit from Ravel this month is the Dave Deal Baja Humbug. Uh, this is of course an SSP, the Selected Subjects Program. Uh, this means that this is sort of a one and one run and done type of thing, at least for this run. Uh, nothing that Ravel does at this point is ever just put away and never seen again, but uh, there is not a continuing production of this. Once this run of kits sells out, that'll be it. There will be no more until they decide to reissue it again. This is one of those weird non-scale things. If you buy Dave Deal stuff, you know what you're getting into there. It's very interesting they released this in completely and total copying of the original box art, including what I might would say would be a little bit of a tone-deaf Mexican uh thing on the side of the box. If you've ever seen an original one here, you know Dave Deal is dressed up like a Mexican and is literally phonetically spelling things in a very stereotypical Mexican way, and yikes. But I also understand the nostalgia factor for the people that are selling this to. They probably don't really like Mexican people in the first place and think it's hysterical. Huh. But, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I wonder what they were going to put on the side of that, because, you know, the top, the box top is not very, you know, it's a Volkswagen Beetle, basically, but wow, that side box art from the 1960s. Eee, God, that's 2017. Yeah. Uh, something else needs to be done there, but it is what it is. Uh, and besides, there's your two Ravel kits for the month. Uh, again, nothing ground-shaking or awe-inspiring, but at least they're still in business, right? So we got that going on. Going over to uh, Japan, we have two releases from Hasegawa, or two releases, excuse me, from Aoshima. There's a Hasegawa release in there. Uh, first up from the guys over at Aoshima is the uh, last of the model car 
kits for the month of February, and that is the Skyline 2000 GTR uh, Japanese Grand Prix race car. So this is a race spec vehicle. Uh, again, best car vintage, that old, older kits like that. Uh, Aoshima's Skyline is not a particularly good one when you compare it to the other kits that are out there. Fujimi's is a little newer, still kind of shady. And then, of course, the Tamiya one is the one you, that you want. Harden, the Tommy one does not make a race car. So if you want a race car, you got to go with this. This uh, kit does come with decals to do all four of the cars that are on the box art there. So the 57, 50, the 56, 57, 58, and 59 car. Uh, obviously, you only build one at a time, but you can build the entire front row of the 1970 uh, Jap uh, Japan Grand Prix. Uh, you'd have to do the research there. I know that they won because there's so many skylines in it, but I'm not sure which one of those won. Uh, the decals are pretty basic. Uh, sponsorship was not what it is today back in 1970. So basically some round rules with numbers. The numbers are different, you know, type font, so that they're not all exactly the same. So it's kind of cool. Uh, again, if you want a race car, there's this uh, this option, basically. Other than that, like I said, it's, a, it's an old reissue. This does only come with, like, race spec wheels and tires and things like that, but otherwise pretty much has all the parts in it to build a stock Skyline or a race car. Next kit out of Aoshima for the month of February, or last kit out of Aoshima for the month of February, I should say, is this. This is the uh, Liberty Walk Nissan Skyline, the R35, uh, version 2. So, you guys follow along and you play uh, your, you play along with the uh, uh, Japanese releases, you know that this kit was basically already done once as the version 1 car with a, like a powdered blue car on the box art. This is the version 2. Uh, basically here there's only uh, two frets of things that are new. Two frets, that's a photo etch term, but two runners for the things that are new. First up is the wheels. The wheels are new. Tires are not, but the wheels themselves are new. Uh, there are two-piece wheels, wheel face and a, and a, a barrel. And then the rear spoiler is a GT3 type spoiler compared to the ducktail spoiler that was on the first one. So there's new spoiler pieces. And basically, other than the spoiler, you know, itself and the and the winglets and the mount itself, that's it. Other than that, the over fenders and everything else about this kit are the exact same way the version one is. That means this is a curbside kit without an engine, but it does come with all the parts to make a left-hand drive kit. So. Uh, you could, in theory, again, build another right-hand drive Skyline. That is what this is, and you know, it is a Japanese car. You can't buy the Liberty Walk kit here in the United States, so I think we covered this the first time this kit came out. Uh, but the cars that they are specifically modeling uh, on the box art are JDM, not uh, North American Liberty Walk cars. Uh, so, you know, if you happen to have some of the other uh, uh R35 Skylines that Aoshima did, uh, like the Egoist or uh, any of the. Ugh, I thought I was going to sneeze. Any of the other R35 kits that came with a right hand drive and you don't have those five components to make the left hand drive system, which is the entire interior bucket itself plus the dashboard and the windshield wipers and the scuttle panel, they're all in there. So uh, you get a free interior out of it to uh, convert another car to right hand drive. So that. Uh, you know, could be worth it to you if you want. Also, the decal sheet in this is new. It's not exactly the same, uh, I would say, livery. But, you know, the, if you, you saw the box art, it has a whole bunch of, like, little logos for Pirelli and, and all the different little uh, companies they work with as far as tires and, and various performance parts. So those are not the exact same sponsors that the Powder Blue Car had, so there's new decals as well. Over at Hasegawa, like I said, there's that kit from Hasegawa, and it is this, the reissue of the... Uh, Jaguar XJR 9LM, or Le Mans, for the 1988 24 Hours of Le Mans winning car. Uh, I find the, the reissue of this, which actually technically is a March reissue. So we did get actually two kits, these next two kits, this one and the next one, are kits that were coming out in March that actually came out within the first two days of March, which was pretty spiffy. Uh, this does not have the silk cut uh, logos. Check the decals, this one does not. Now, people will point out that France bans tobacco sponsorship, but not in 1988. That didn't start until 1992. So, like, the, the Toyota TS-20, uh, that doesn't have the Marlboro logos on it, but it shouldn't because it's after the tobacco ban. 1988, before the tobacco ban, so this should have the silk cut uh, logos out there. There are a couple of companies that make either replacement decals altogether or just the words for the tobacco sponsorship. Uh, 
Uh, up to you what you want to do with that. Be aware that the Studio 27 Carbon Fiber Kit does not fit this, or at least it's not designed to, because this kit is a curbside and does not have the engine and all the things that a lot of the uh, components for the Carbon Fiber Kit are designed to fit. Also, it probably won't fit a lot of the parts just in general because they're going to be tooled slightly different, fit slightly different. Not that it couldn't be made to fit, but it's not designed to fit this. It's designed to fit the Tamiya Kit, which, again, out of production, but not that expensive to get out of uh, Japan itself. And then the last kit for the month, uh, for this episode, I should say, and really technically another one of the first kits of March is this. This is the brand new tool from BMAX. And this is the Toyota Corona. This uh, car specifically represents the 1994 Japanese Touring Car Champion ship car. Uh, both the series itself and this car on the box art is the championship car from that year. Uh, you could also build this as the number 37 car, which was driven by Gori Suzuka, which you ought to know his name by now because we keep mentioning him about F1 cars that Asagawa is making in the 124 scale. He also drove in JTCC. He also currently owns, again, teams in Super GT. Uh, but you can. there's two different versions of this. One is sponsored by Zent. One is sponsored by Esso. Uh, it very much mirrors the Tamiya kit that they did of the, of the Exiv that has the same sort of... Uh, Zent and uh, Esso thing, uh, as far as the liveries go for that. That was a 1995 car, so really it was just a uh, one year newer. <coughs> Curbside kit, but again, this is brand new tooling. It has nothing to do with the Tamiya kit. Uh, the Tamiya kit is, another, is the next generation of this car, uh, so it's completely different. Uh, there is at least one livery set for this car already in the works and that is from uh, the folks over at SK. They're going to be doing the uh, Energizer car that, uh, oh, I can't think what his name is. It's in my, I, I just looked at this this morning and it was right there and it's gone and oh well. Uh, <laughs> I got decals to make the 95 car out of the Tommy I kit. Like, it's, ooh. but regardless, because uh, he's not a, uh, an Asian uh, descent driver is a European, and it's going to bother me, and I'm not going to look it up because I'm not going to waste more time in this video that it's already taking. But uh, this de the decals on this car, by the way, you paint the car white, and the decals do everything else, which means there's a giant roof decal. I'm not so sure I'm going to try to do that. Uh, I'm thinking that might be just best to mask off and... Uh, Really, there's not a lot of complicated shapes in this in general as far as masking it off. All, you know, It may just be easier to put the side decals on, especially since that back uh, cut is not like necessarily even with the doors, per se. Uh, it doesn't follow the, the curve of the back door. But again, that roof decal, that might be more trouble than it's worth trying to get it to sit down. So uh, That's something to think about. Both cars are the same red and white uh, color scheme. Uh, the Energizer car, I think it's black. But like I said, there's a, there is an aftermarket decal set coming for it. And like every B-Max kit, this car does come with a, a detail set of its own. Small sheet of photo etch uh, there. Not a heck of a lot going on with it in terms of like things. It's a seat mount, a couple of uh, radiator type deals, windshield wipers, brake rotors, seat belt material, uh, your antenna for the roof, the, the uh, air intake for the uh, jack. And then some, you know, like tow hooks and things like that. So not a lot going on there uh, compared to some of the other detail upsets. But, you know, BMAX, every single kit they do has a sold separately detail upset. And so this one does as well. And that, guys, is that for this week. So next week we'll uh, continue to plunge further into the month of March. Uh, we already did the March compilation video by the time you see this probably because this all these videos always take longer to edit and hopefully by the time uh i get a chance to put this video together and put it online i will have gotten the revel stuff from them as far as what they're going to do in march because they're lagging behind at this point i thought this video sh the march video would come out on march 1st but eh, it didn't get the revel stuff then so i'm just sort of like peeking at the uh, march stuff here got the uh Monte Carlo 2000 BMW 2002 rally. That's kind of interesting. Some enthusiast series Porsches from Fujimi. Some people may be looking for those. The two that are they're doing, I already have. But uh, I know that you know the enthusiast series Porsches are always always popular. And, and I really just don't. Uh, there's the one uh, that new, or I'm not new, but the compilation RX7 that Aoshima is doing for the uh, FC3S is something that I'm looking forward to. But 
other than that, the one kit I wanted to get for sure out of this month was the Corona. I'm probably going to get, uh, you know, anybody who knows knows I wasn't working, and I am working now, so I have to basically uh, order that in real time. But I, I want to get a couple of, probably three of them, both, both team cars and then the one uh, Macau car. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how things go from there. So we should probably get, like I said, we uh, at this point, Hasegawa hasn't done their May announcements, so we should probably get that because uh, they're usually pretty early in the month. And then we'll figure out what uh, decal stuff is going to be coming out of Studio 27 for the month. That will be uh, interesting as well. So, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys.